The Karamundi catchment on the southern end of the Sunshine Coast is a beautiful area. Water from the catchment flows into waterways comprising two creeks and three canals, and then into Karamundi Lake and from there into the ocean. As a result of residential development of the area, the waterway also receives outflow from an artificial lake to the north, that is Lake Kawana, which in turn draws its water from the Malula River. Karamundi Lake is a popular site for locals and tourists alike for numerous activities such as kayaking, paddling, jogging, fishing and playing in the many children's playgrounds. But not all use of the lake is without impact. There's a lot of boating activity and not everyone obeys the speed limit of six knots. Wave washed caused by speeding boats has caused an enormous amount of erosion of the banks along Karamundi Lake and even more so along Karamundi Creek. The wash hits the banks and gradually eats away at the sandy coffee rock. In the narrower parts of Karamundi Creeks, even at low speeds, there may be a wash from boats that affects the banks over time. But that's not the only cause of erosion. Since the rapid expansion of residential and commercial properties in the area, the way water enters the lake and creeks has changed dramatically. Now that there are houses, roads and paved areas, water is not able to seep into the ground and enter the lake and creeks. Instead, it runs rapidly across paved areas and gutters, into stormwater drains, and enters the waterway at an increased speed and volume. This creates greater turbulence, which gradually damages the banks of the waterways. In addition to that, there are naturally occurring events, such as king tides, heavy rain and flooding, that put additional pressure on the waterways. Karamundi Catchment Care Group Vice President David Allen explains. Since the inception of the Karamundi Catchment Care Group, we've always looked at ways to limit bank erosion. And a few years ago, a number of uh, bloodwood trees fell into the water. And that was the uh, motivating force for us to seek ways to find uh, strategies to limit bank erosion. We discovered coir log walls. Coir logs are made out of uh, coconut fibre. They're very dense. You can roll it together tightly, tie it, tie it with um, coconut fibre rope, and uh, and in doing so, you've really got a natural fibred log, which is robust, resistant to mould, and um, it doesn't need to have chemicals to reinforce it or to protect it. So based on that, we use the coil log strategy to limit bank erosion. So there you have it. To build a coir log wall, take one perfect day at Karamundi Lake, a delivery of coir logs, a heap of soil and two wheelbarrows, a group of enthusiastic volunteers and plenty of coffee and snacks to keep them going. After a quick briefing from David Allen, the job gets underway. First, it's lift and carry those logs to get them closer to the scene of the construction. Then it's a matter of placing the first logs into place. And eventually another row of logs. Then it's keeping them firm by threading stakes through the rope netting and into the ground. And more logs. And more stakes. And usually log placement is fairly straightforward, but sometimes it's necessary to improvise in order to get a log into place. This work team developed a shop shoe shuffle technique to manoeuvre a log through an exposed tree root. But back to them later. Yeah, I volunteer with several uh, environmental community groups around the Sunshine Coast. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. I, I love environmental work and uh, it's great to get out there and meet lots of different people and do hands-on stuff. Uh, and it would be really nice to walk past here in a few years' time and see 
uh, how it's flourishing and know that I was a party helping to put that together there. Remember that mound of soil? Well, it's time for shoveling it into the wheelbarrows and start backfilling behind the coir log walls. Being careful not to follow the barrow down a steep slope. So David, you're, you're volunteering here today, what are you doing? I'm uh, cooking for about, uh, 20, about 30 people. Okay. They're busy uh, working and putting the cool logs in. And what's on the menu? Uh, we've got sausages and we've got uh, vegetarian sausages. Uh, also there's uh, some salad, lettuce and so forth and uh, tomato. Nice and healthy? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Before we let the volunteers break for lunch, there's time for a quick review of progress from the water. Here they are again with that difficult log. But as we can see, they've installed many logs before this difficult phase. So it's time for a well-earned break and a chance to get into those sausages and salad. Also a quick planning discussion for the afternoon's activities, followed by a pep talk from our project manager, and the team is ready to roll again. Once the backfilling is completed, we cover the soil with geotextile fabric and plant seedlings to stabilise the area. Geotextiles are permeable fabrics which are used in association with soil. They act to filter, reinforce and protect the coil log installation. The fabric is cut into lengths and pinned on with brackets. Then the fabric is pierced to enable the seedlings to be planted. We plant predominantly Lomandra, which is a grass species proved to be extremely effective in stabilising banks and slopes. This section here is uh, the first stretch the first 60 metres of coil log that we laid here along the bank. You can see here, here's the logs laid one on top of the other. Contours around the contours of the bank. These plants, particularly the lamandra, is a clumping plant. It holds the soil together, so it strengthens the bank. These obviously are thriving now that they've been here for four years. As we come along through here, we can see the sedges growing there. We've got other kind of vegetation. And here we have our grasses. We've had many partners over the years in helping us get this project on track. First and foremost is a productive partnership with the Sunshine Coast Council, which has provided funding, delivery of the necessary components, equipment and tools, and supervision of the work. Over the years, we've had volunteers from groups like Green Army, Farm Flow, Green Nomad. We have local residents turning up on their day off to help out. And of course, our wonderful Caramundi Catchment Care Group members who turn up year after year. In the end, it's all about the volunteers. This sort of project just wouldn't get done if people weren't willing to give up their own time to come along and look after their local environment. 